right, we'll go ahead and have Coach make an opening remark, and then we'll take questions from the group. We're excited to be here. This has been a great day for us. Um, flew in yesterday afternoon with the players, and um, it was fun. I, I've been to Vegas a lot. Uh, the players hadn't been here before, so it was neat to see them. Uh, we had uh, had a good dinner last night with some uh, Oklahoma State people, and then uh, gave the players a chance to look around a little bit. And it's a beautiful facility. Um, we're excited about it. I'm excited about the uh, the players, the upcoming season. We've got about 20 days before we get started, so we're semi-vacation. Uh, other than the players, they're working hard. And we've got great leadership. Um, I'm really excited about uh, our team. I'm excited about the direction we're moving. Excited about Oklahoma State administration, our support, president of the university, athletic director, everybody that loves Oklahoma State. Um, it's a great time for us. I'm looking forward to the upcoming season. All right, we'll take questions. We'll go on the left-hand side, uh, row three on the far left. Hey, I'm Jay Swick, OK, Steve Sports Radio. Uh, Coach, I want you to talk about your returning players. You've got a lot on offense and some key contributors on defense. What's the main difference from last year's team going into this year? And just get your opinion on that. A year ago, we had 28 new players come in. And then ultimately, before we started the season, we had 38 new players as we added 10 more. So there were a lot of areas that we had to decide what was best for our team and how to get to that point. A number of those players were at semester transfers that we felt like were good enough to help us based on the portal, unlike what you would have with high school players there was a little bit of uncertainty in what direction to go in order to be fair to all the players involved. This year we have fewer portal transfers that semester, more returning starters. So coaches have a better direction in, in, in how to get there. Now it's just a matter of us kind of getting out of the way and allowing the maturity and the leadership we have of our team to take over. Okay, we'll go over here on the right side in the front row. Kenneth Barry, Touchdowns and Tangents. Coach Gundy, uh, you and Alan Bowman are probably two of the most tenured people uh, left in the Big 12. So just having a quarterback who's been in college that long, he's seen the Big 12, different angles, you know, played for you and against you. How much of a force multiplier is he helping build out the culture and teaching the younger guys and kind of setting a standard, you know, on his way out? So Alan has done a really good job um, of adapting to our culture and buying into Oklahoma State University. When he came in a year ago, he was one of the players that I was talking about that we needed him to earn his position. Um, and since then, he's got a year under his belt. Uh, he's very mature. He's engaged to be married. He already has two degrees. He has a good feel for us. Uh, he's a good feel for our system. Uh, he's been around a long time, and I think the experience that he brings to our team, the respect, and the players believe in him at this point, benefit us the most at this time. We'll go left side in the fourth row, in the middle. Mike uh, Blair Kirkhoff with the Kansas City Star. And I got a conference question for you. And I'm just wondering the way the league is set up now with the 16 teams and no Texas and Oklahoma, if um, there, there is an opportunity for one or two programs to kind of have a dominant stretch in this league, the way we saw like Oklahoma. Uh, that's a great question. I, I don't know that any of us uh, will be able to read into that at this point. We're learning about the new teams that are coming in. In my opinion, as we move forward, there's going to be a lot of parity 
I should say, more parity in college football than there has been over the last few years. If revenue sharing takes effect, I would guess that most schools in this league will distribute money somewhat equally to football. The direction we're going, that's going to determine the type of players that you have in your organization, whether we like it or not. Recruiting is still recruiting, but it won't be as much recruiting as now. It will be the ability to distribute money to the right players that you need based on the talent that you think that you've seen at that particular time. I think that we've got a number of teams in this league that have an opportunity to make a move national. Whether anybody can take over and dominate for an extended period of time would be hard to tell at this point. Okay, we'll go third way back on the right side in the middle. Brian Silipan, Panola Watchman. Uh, Coach Gundy, you, this is the, the, you know, you finished, or excuse me, your pick third in the preseason poll. Uh, your thoughts on that in a conference that's going through so much realignment? I, I haven't really paid much attention to, um, to preseason polls. I've They've always said the good news is we get to play all the games. Um, I'm really excited about our conference. I've said that for the last few years as we've continued to add teams. From day one, I've always said that I think we have the best commissioner in all of sports in the Big 12. I think we have a, a guy that's innovative. He's smart. He's not afraid to take a chance. He's bullish on moving forward and doing whatever it takes to put the Big 12 where it needs to be for us to crown national champions in football. Um, I have confidence in him. And with that being said, I believe that this conference is going to play better over the next four to five years than it has in the last 12 to 15 that for the most part, other than last year, that we were intact. So I'm excited about the group. Um, could there be more conference realignment in the future? Very well could happen based on all the changes we've had in the last 18 to 20 months that none of us could have predicted. So I think everything's a moving target, but I really like where we're at and I'm excited about this conference. Right here on the right side, front row. Marcus Trevino with Stillwater News Press. Coach, how have you handled Ollie Gordon's arrest and how has he been handling it mentally, emotionally, and those kinds of things? Uh, Ollie's doing fine. I've visited with him multiple times over the last week. Um, be quite honest with you, yesterday we had another hour conversation and it was really the first time that, uh, that he smiled. Um, I think that it, uh, it affected him like it would most people. We brought him here today um, so you guys could ask him that question. That was one of the reasons that I wanted to bring him here. Um, it's hard for me to speak for Ollie. I can only give you some indication on what I've seen over the last week. Um, I sit back and thought about what I thought was best for Oklahoma State University, Oklahoma State football and Ollie as we move forward. And we made decisions. And the other thing I shared with Ollie yesterday was after he decided that he wanted to come to today's event, that I told him, when this is finished today at four o'clock, it's over for me. I've already made the decisions that I think is what's best for you and this team. And you need to make the decisions and the comments of what you think is best for yourself and the team and then after today it's over with and that's what our goal is and and i think we'll be able to get that accomplished you go to the left side third row in the middle hey mike colin wilson with the action network uh we have to talk about the offensive line the most experienced in the nation a year ago you and i talked about leaving the zone read going to man counter power after the non-conference schedule, the numbers just jumped off the page. Was it because the offensive line's grasp of the new run concepts and blocking? So after the first three games, we we changed the concepts of what we were doing up front. Um, we, we changed the alignment of our tailback, particularly what we thought Ollie Gordon would be best at. 
and we shoved all of our poker chips on the table and we hit. It worked for us. Uh, we made the right decision. Um, Ollie started running like crazy. We were better at blocking those schemes than we, than we were the other ones in the first three games. And that was on the coaches. That was on me. I'm involved in the offense pretty heavily. Not on game day, but prior to getting to game day. So when we made the decisions to move in that direction, it worked out well for us. Then our players started running the same plays, four or five plays, over and over and over. And Ollie started to create um, really good vision on those type of plays and the different ways that he was running them. I think he led the nation last year in yards after contact for running backs, which fit that style of play. And it worked for us. And all of a sudden, it helped us become a better passing team because we had the ability to rush the football. All right, we'll go on the right side, three-fourths of the way back in the middle. Coach Gundy, Alex Blackburn, College Football Dogs. Uh, what improvements have you seen on the defensive side of the ball given the struggles from last year? So we've got a uh, very athletic defense, in my opinion. Um, I think we, uh, we can run and get to the ball. Uh, we've made a few adjustments um, scheme-wise, not a lot. We, we played three down last year, played a little bit of four down. Um, from day one, I've said I wanted to, to have the advantage and the luxury of playing some three and four down, not just on third downs, but on first and second downs. So we've worked toward that. Um, I think our players will have a better feel for our system and uh, will allow us to play faster and get to the ball. And we need to tackle better. We missed a lot of tackles, got out of place at times on some play action pass. And if we can eliminate those two things and minimize that, we'll be a better defense. Okay, we'll stay on the right side, uh, second row in the middle. Coach Lynn Harrington, Stay Alive Power 5. How you doing today? I'm good, thank you. That's good to hear. I like the mullet, by the way. It's not as long as it used to be, but it's getting there. <laughs> All right. So last season, you started out 2-2 two and two with two losses, um, including one at home to South Alabama. Everyone wrote your team out. Then you guys finished strong down the stretch and wound up winning 10 games and made it all the way to the Big 12 championship game. With that being said, how hungry is your team this time around to get back to the Big 12 championship game? That's a great question. And one thing that I shared with them in January and then after spring ball is just what you said. We know that we're a mature team. We all know that we have a lot of returning starters. We know that we have the Doak Walker winner in the backfield. We know that we have a couple guys that had tremendous success at the wide receiver position. We know that we have eight linemen that have played a considerable amount of college football during their career. We have a defense that is has maturity up front. We have a linebacker returning that had 150 tackles. We've got guys that are returning in the secondary that have the potential to be in NFL camps next year. So with all that being said, now it's going to be on them, their leadership, their willingness to work hard and stay hungry in that it's easier to work from behind and get to that point during the season than it is to be out front and stay there in my opinion because i don't want the team to think that they've arrived because they certainly haven't i'm just guessing the teams that we're playing could care less about what we did last year and they're going to try to beat us so i stress that to the team and i feel comfortable with the leadership with the maturity that we have with these guys that they'll be able to push themselves hard in august all right, we'll take let's stay on the right hand side here, uh, row three in the middle. Hey, coach Tyler Budge, CF Budge. You've got two relatively new road trips this season at Boulder and Provo. I know you played at Boulder or coached at Boulder back in 2008, but relatively new to this team. What unique challenges come with playing new conference opponents on the road for the first time and just starting to get a feel for what those road environments are like? Part of the new conference we're in and the fun part for the fans media for everybody involved is playing in new facilities and stadiums and on the plane ride out here with the players that we brought to today's event they brought that up and they were talking about that and i was listening to him 
they're excited about playing in Provo. They're excited about playing in Boulder because they haven't been there. And it was interesting listening to Bowman because Bowman has been around long enough that he's played in about every stadium in the country. But he said, I haven't been able to play in these stadiums. I haven't experienced it. Uh, so that's a fun part of college football. And we're excited about it. Um, playing two games in the mountains. I mean, obviously I played and coached uh, a number of times in Boulder. Um, I've, I've been to Provo and seen it, obviously not played or coached there, but excited about doing it. So we sold out our season tickets a week or two ago to Oklahoma State. And I think one of the reasons that we sell out so fast is the excitement the fans have because of some of the new teams. I think they're excited about some of these new teams coming to our place. So that's been good for the Big 12 Conference. Right side, fourth row, center aisle. Hey, Coach Gundy, uh, respect your career, but I would not be doing my job if I didn't ask you to give your personal response to being in the same conference with Deion Sanders and whether that November 29th game has a little extra juice for you. Well, that's a neat. I thought you were going to ask me who I was going to vote for in November. <laughs> Damn, put, I thought you put a lot of pressure on me. So, uh, I have a lot of respect for Coach's career. Uh, I know a lot more about him as a player uh, than I did, you know, as a coach, because it's not coached for a long period of time at, at this level. We had meetings in Phoenix, uh, Big 12. Uh, administrative and, and football coaches and I'd actually forgot about it and then we got in there and all the coaches were around and so I started looking around and I was chairing those meetings and so we had to do introductions and then realized and um, it was very enjoyable being in a room with him and his contribution to a lot of the subjects that we talked about uh, and I think that we're lucky in our league that he's with us because he brings more people and notoriety and viewers to the Big 12 Conference. And that's what makes it go. We need viewership. We want people to watch our teams play. And um, it'll be fun to, to have him in our league. It'll be fun. It's, it's fun for me to have Colorado back in our league and to be able to compete against him. Um, I can only imagine what his competitive level is, so that'll be fun to have him in the league. Got time for one more question. That'll come right here in the front row on the left-hand side. Coach, Ty Kaplan, the Daily Toreador. This past season, two of the top running backs in the country came out of the Big 12. Taj Brooks with Texas Tech and Allie Gordon with Oklahoma State. First question, how do you game plan for a guy like Taj since you have them this year? And then how important is it for the Big 12 to have star players like that that everybody in the nation knows about? The star players draw attention, make more people want to watch us play in our league, which is a good thing. Uh, we're working hard, all the schools, the Big 12 office, the commissioner, everybody's working um, to get to that goal. In preparing for those guys, football is a numbers game. So when you play somebody that has a running back of that caliber, one other person's got to play the run. When that happens, you become susceptible to the pass. As I mentioned earlier, as the season went on, we became a much better passing team at Oklahoma State because Ollie Borden because a much better running back based on what we were trying to get accomplished. So it's a numbers game. You can get him up there and stop him. Or you can let him rush and stay back, or you can try to play guessing games, which most people do. But basically, you got to get somebody else down there to stop the run. And that's the advantage of having a good running back. It allows your receivers to be much better players. All right, that'll do it. Coach, thank you for your time. You bet. Thank you.